Welcome to this lesson on the slope of parallel and perpendicular lines. So just a couple of reminders. Slope is the steepness of a line. Or another definition is the rate of change of a line. And it's always the change in y over the change in x. There are three different ways to find a slope. When you have a graph, you can count the rise over run. When you have two points, you can use the slope formula, which I put for you right here. And then when you have an equation of a line, you can just find the m value when the slope is in or when the line is in slope intercept form. All right, let's talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, so when you have parallel lines, remember those are lines in the same plane that never intersect. They are going to have the same slope. So an example of that would be y equals 1 half x plus 3. The slope is 1 half. And then y equals 1 half x minus 2. They had the same slope. The y-intercept doesn't really matter for parallel and perpendicular. Okay, and then when you have perpendicular lines, remember those are lines that intersect to form four right angles, so 90 degree angles. They're going to have opposite reciprocal slopes. All right, so let's say that we have a line y equals 3 half x minus 4. So opposite means we change the sign. So this sign was positive. We're going to change the sign to negative. And then reciprocal means to flip the fraction. So 2 thirds x plus one, remember the, the y-intercept, the last number, doesn't matter as far as parallel and perpendicular, just the slope matters. Okay, so let's go over some examples. So how to determine if two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So if you are given two points, you wanna use the slope formula and find the slope of each line. So for line A, Remember the slope formula, let me scroll back up really quickly, is right here. Basically, you subtract the y values divided by subtracting the x values. All right, so 4 minus 1, these are my y values. And then you want to make sure you go in the same order. So because I started with 4, I want to start with 3 minus negative 3 which you guys know minus a negative is the same thing as plus. So we have 4 minus 1, that's 3. And then 3 plus 3, that's 6, which reduces to 1 half. So make sure you always reduce. Okay, let's find the slope of line B. So 1 minus negative 3. And then because I started with 1, I want to start with 4. 4 minus negative 4. All right, so one minus negative three, that's the same thing as one plus three, so four. And then same thing, four plus four is eight, which reduces to one half. Okay, so as you can see, these two lines have the same slope, which means these two lines, if we graphed them, they would be parallel. All right, in the next example, when you are given two lines in slope intercept form, all you need to do is look at the slope. So this one would be six. This is negative one over six. Okay, so they're definitely not the same, so not parallel. Let's see if they are opposite reciprocals. So they're definitely opposite because this is positive six and this is negative one half. But are they reciprocals? Let's think about the number six. It's understood to be over one. Six over one is the same thing as six. And if I took the reciprocal of that, 
I would get 1 over 6. So these are reciprocals and they're opposite, so these would be perpendicular lines. All right, in number three, these are in standard form. So I want to convert them to slope intercept form first. So I'm going to write line R over here so I have some space. So slope intercept form, we want to get Y by itself, isolate Y. So the first thing that I'm going to do is move my 12 to the other side, subtract 12 if you want to think about it that way. And then I want to divide everything by 4 so that I can isolate y. So this would be y equals, this is understood, 1 fourth x minus 3. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing with s, and we are going to compare their slopes. So 8y plus 2x equals 16. I want to move the 2x to the other side. And then I'm going to divide everything by 8. So negative 2 over 8, that would reduce to negative 1 over 4. Always make sure you reduce so that you can compare them. And then 16 divided by 8, that's positive 2. Okay, so my two slopes are positive 1 fourth and negative 1 fourth. So they're not the same. So they're not parallel. They are opposite signs, but they're not reciprocals. So in this case, these are neither. They're not parallel and they're not perpendicular. So on a graph, I'm just sketching this out, they would intersect but just not at a right angle. Okay, and then when we are given two graphs, we want to count the rise over run to find the slope of each graph. So remember, rise is the vertical distance and run is the horizontal distance between two points on the line. So first of all, determine if they are positive, negative, zero, or undefined by looking at the graph. So this first example we know is negative because it falls from left to right. And then it has a rise of three and a run of one, which simplifies to negative three. And then in the next example, this is a positive slope because it rises from left to right and it rises one and runs two which is just positive one half so these really have nothing in common they're not the same they're not opposite reciprocals so these would be neither okay go ahead and pause the video now and you can complete the slope of parallel and perpendicular lines practice and then you can check it with your teacher and then restart the video for the next lesson. Okay, so now we're going to go over how to write equations of lines that are parallel or perpendicular to lines that we have been given. So just a reminder, parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay, so in the first example, it says write the equation of a line that is parallel to y equals 10x minus 3 and goes to the point 1, 5. So first of all, because it says parallel, we know that the slope will remain the same. The slope of my new line is going to be 10. Now, don't worry about the y-intercept for the line that you are given. If you want to like cross it out just so you don't accidentally use it, you don't need that y-intercept. However, to write a new equation, we do need the y-intercept for the new line. So we're going to use this point, and we are going to use the slope-intercept form. So the point is going to be x and y, and then this is my m10. So I'm going to substitute those into y equals mx plus b. So y comes first, so 5 equals my m is 10. My x value is 1 plus b. And I'm going to solve for my y-intercept. So I'm going to multiply 10 times 1, which is 10. Then I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides so that I can get b by itself. It's negative 5. And then I'm going to write the equation of my new line. y equals, my slope is 10, x, and then my y-intercept is negative 5. Okay, pause the video now and see if you can do the next example by yourselves. 
Okay, so this again is parallel, so it's going to have the same slope of negative 4. I'm going to use y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to use this as x, this as y. So negative 1 equals negative 4 times 0 plus b. So negative 1 equals 0 plus b. So negative 1 is my b. So my final answer would be y equals negative 4x minus 1. Okay, and then in the next example, we want this line to be perpendicular. So instead of using the same slope, we need the opposite reciprocal slope. So it's going to change to positive 8 over 5. We're still going to use this as x, this as y. So negative 3 equals 8 over 5 times negative 5 plus b. So negative 3 equals, let's see, these will cancel, so negative 8 plus b. So 5 equals b if I add 8 to both sides. So my final answer, y equals 8 fifths x plus 5. All right, try the last example by yourselves. Pause the video and then we'll check it. Okay, so again, this one is perpendicular, so I'm going to change the sign to positive. And my slope for my original line is negative 1, and if you take the reciprocal of 1, it's still 1. So my new slope will be positive 1. Alright, this is x, this is y. So negative 1 equals 1, negative 5 plus b. So I'm substituting in everything into y equals mx plus b. Okay, now I want to multiply 1 times negative 5, which is negative 5. And then I'll add 5 to both sides, which will give me 4. So my final answer, y equals 1x, you don't have to write the 1 it's understood to be there, plus 4. Alright, you can stop the video now and go ahead and complete your practice and then check it with your teacher.